this guy. Let me see if I can find him. What's he saying? Tia, fat, she do, B and B. Oh God! All right, forget about. Her. Here, look, Rose. Zero point one three three six. First target, second target. Rose. Stop. USD. the level again? 1.33 It's not right. Not 0 0.133 This isn't it, is it? Oasis, okay. It's the Oasis network. Rose price. This is really confusing, huh? It's called the Oasis network, and this is called the Rose price. I see why a lot of people <laughs> struggle with crypto because of stupidity like this. So there's a network that's called its token Rose. All right, see that? That's good that we checked. So we're looking at a token that has been in existence since the 19th of November 2020. Um, 19th of November 2020. So let's try and uh, find it on trading view. And what I try to do is I try and find the one with the most data. Um, let's have a look at Binance actually. I'll look at Binance. This, this might have it because it's the US dollar. Let's try those two first. Twenty twenty, perfect. It's there. So we have that. Let me see this one as well. Uh, tether. All right. So when you have two charts, one is showing US dollar, one is showing the tether, but the data is still correct. Go over the one that says tether, not the US dollar. The US dollar will have an aggregate of all the exchanges that it's on. But actually, it'd be better to just go for accurate data of Binance because they have all the data anyway. So it's obvious that this was launched on Binance. So Binance will have most of the volume anyway. So all the other exchanges are going to be irrelevant in the context of, of, uh, of this uh, token. Uh, so I would just stick with Binance in that, in that respect. So we have the correct chart now. Thank God for that. So let's just quickly have a look at the the uh, what it is because I have no idea. The Oasis mainnet. Hmm. I don't know why Oasis. Built for developers, scale fast and effortlessly. Privacy, the missing piece, the missing piece to Web three. Sapphire provides developers with the unique capability. To build EVM based apps on with on chain confidentiality. Developers can use Sapphire, the first and only confidential EVM compatible paradigm, to build smart contracts that are 100% confidential, 100% public, or anywhere on a spectrum of confidentiality. It has, I have literally no use of this. Oasis, Oasis Wallet is an is the official non-custodial wallet for storing, sending, and receiving digital assets on the Oasis network. Network. So maybe it's a layer one, huh? Is it a layer one? Is this a chain? Ecosystem. Multi-chain. Hundreds of dApps built on Oasis. Oasis grants program. 235 million Oasis Grants ecosystem, okay. So they're, they're using the money that they raised from the first bull run, from the bull market, to 
create this uh, ecosystem fund where new developers can apply for cash to build an app which works on their chain. That's what I'm seeing. So they're building in a whole kind of technological ecosystem. Um, it's going to be a lot of speculation on this. And obviously, I think uh, depending on how successful the apps are, will determine how much value b is brought to this uh, network. Uh, I it's very early so i think a lot of people are like speculating on the ethereum killer or which layer one is going to be the, the come out on top but very speculative uh question arguments i think at the end of the day the ones the applications that will do best are going to be the ones that don't rely on it any specific chain or network or protocol the ones that are cross-chain and chain agnostic i think ultimately that's where we're heading i think at the end of the day most people people like myself don't really care what programming like you don't you don't buy a you don't buy a uh, like you don't care if something is programmed in java or in c plus plus or in python or whatever you don't really care about that you just want it to work you just want the functionality and the usability and what it does for you. You don't really care how it's programmed. You don't really care if it's an app or a PC as long as it does what it's meant to do. Yeah. When, you, when you're looking at websites, you don't care if it's like Apache or Nginx or something else or, Win, or Microsoft Windows, ASP, or whatever it is these days, Windows servers. When you're like on a cloud-based something storage, you don't care if it's Amazon or Linode or something or something else. You don't really care about that. I think all of these kind of kind of these arguments and the stuff that people are having in the crypto sphere are very petty, and they detract from the real value, the true value, and that's going to be the value which the mass market brings to Web three. And all of that is going to be in end use, in applications of, of end use. And I don't know how I can use this. So at the moment, it's all speculative. I think there's going to be growth in value when it comes to, um, when it comes to the ecosystem growing, you know, when it comes to these applications attracting value. Uh, so yeah there is going to be an increase in value but in terms of what it's going to be more for like big investors and not really for end users and you know so it's very difficult for me to invest in this kind of stuff period regardless of whether it's bullish or not so they have a total supply of 10 billion they have a 52 million trading volume that's really good they have a 1.2 billion uh, fully diluted valuation, but their current market cap is 826 million. Um, the, the peak of the market, the price of the token went to, where does it say? Uh, 59 cents. And we're currently, the all time low was 3.2 cents. All right, so we have those figures in mind. Does this correspond? No, you see, look, this is, and Binance here it went a little bit higher. Okay, that's fine. Let me do a volume profile on this. We're currently at twelve cents. Um the all time high according to Coin Gecko. I think that's right. What does the all time that said three cents, huh? Well, actually, the launch price was much lower. The launch. 
average price was uh, three cents. Mm -hmm. That's good. It held. It didn't go lower than the launch price. That was that's quite positive for this token. That's quite bullish. So there was interest to keep this from going lower than the launch price. And I think we are at a key level now, actually, because you can see this launch price, the price on that first week, it went up to the, I think that is an SR flip. An SR flip zone, huh? See that? So we have uh, the launch price high. We had a little bit of resistance here and a little bit of resistance here. So potentially this is now forming into some kind of support resistance flip, SR flip now, potentially. We're looking at that kind of scenario right now. Um, doesn't look too bad. We are close to the value area high, which is gonna act as resistance. Um, If I do a fib pull, uh, the golden pocket is higher up, so there's no immediate. We pass through all of this resistance quite easily. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna look at this. Gonna be back in uh, two minutes. Actually, I just gotta go for something. Back in maybe three to four minutes. Okay, so um, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Let me see. So we're at a key area right now, which I think is very important. There's no real volume nodes here to form volume support. Uh, so let me have a look at the... This kind of looks like Bitcoin, huh? This pattern here look, looks a bit like a Wyckoff distribution pattern. Does this look like a Wyckoff accumulation pattern? Spring test. Yeah, it does as well. Huh? It looks a little bit like a Wyckoff. This is Wyckoff, this is Wyckoff. Interesting. This could be the markup. This could be the last point of support before we have an SOS. This is the lowest point of support. This is the last point of support. Then we're looking at an SOS.
One, two, three, four, five. No. One, two, three, four, five. That's there. One. See how this looks in this time frame. Do I really like that this came above? You know, like the four shouldn't come underneath the one, and it clearly has. If that's the one, so sh should the one be there? That isn't even the wave. The first part isn't even the wave. Maybe, maybe this is the wave. Let me get rid of that. Maybe the Elliott wave starts here. But then that doesn't work either, because that wouldn't work either. It's more likely that this first move is the wave, all the way up to there. And you have a deep two. And actually, maybe the five goes up to there. Yeah, that makes more sense. Look, see? Because the four cannot come underneath the one. So this first part is clearly impulsive. See? The way up there. And this is clearly a corrective move. This three can't be here because if the three is there, then the four is there. The four is there, then the four is underneath the one. That's not correct. So therefore, you have to ascertain that the three actually goes is more impulsive, and then the correction of the four is perfectly perfect, but almost perfect, basically in line with the one. And actually, if you look at these levels here, you actually, there is an actual, there is a level here, a strong level, but it's quite, it's a little bit of a zone. Um, probably, probably the wick of this four, actually. Look at that. Yeah. See how it doesn't get above it. So actually, the one is anywhere up to that line. That level is quite important. See that? And what's interesting about this level that I've just drawn is that it comes perfectly in to the golden pocket on the way up. That's interesting, isn't it? That's very interesting. So we have our five count Elliott wave to go up. This would be from, from here to there would be your wave one. So this whole move down is your wave two. <laughs> this is bullish, huh? Because we just started. We've just started our wave three. Yeah, and wave threes are 
are the most bullish. Wave threes are the most bullish. And this has been quite impulsive. Look, from where we are now, when did it begin, actually begin? This is the reversal, it's in September. This is a three day time scale. You see this candle formation here, this red candle taking the lows, followed by a bullish engulfing green candle. That's a reversal candle pattern, yeah? When you combine it with this swing failure of the lows there, uh, and then uh, fun ultimately, the confirmation of this whole pattern is this last green candle that expands upwards to there. And this expansion closes above this uh, the open of that red candle. This whole formation of candles here is, uh, is a, rev a bullish reversal in the lows. And you've basically cleared all these lows and these lows. And you're forming a higher low. Uh, which is also bullish. There's a lot of bullish happenings in this kind of pattern. So really from the breakout of the pattern till now, which is this bullish engulf, this bullish expansion candle there, from, from there to where we are now, we're only 150% above that pattern. That's like a 1.5x from where, where it began. It's not very far in the scale of things. Yeah, it's not very far in the scale of things. And the other thing that I like is you see the, the volume on this rise, it's increasing volume, you see that? The rise is increasing, the volume is increasing. Yeah, we've got some increasing volume. Yeah, obviously the price has gone up more than the volume, but you're never gonna get it to match. You just wanna see an increase, and we have seen an increase in volume. Yeah, so this, whole move up is actually healthy. It's quite a healthy move. Um, you can break it down into the lower time frame. We're probably still on our wave one impulse. I can't, I can't really see any kind of corrective move. Maybe this is the correction. Maybe this is the correction. Maybe the correction is a flat consolidation above this SR flip that we're experiencing now. And this SR flip, basically what where the price that you're potentially acquiring this token is just above the height of its expansion in the on the first day of the token launch, which was 19th of November 2020, right? That's four years, no, that's three years ago three years ago, that's three years and almost two months ago. So the price that you can purchase this token now, if you take it to the current price action, is basically at the same price as day one, basically. Wow, this is extremely nice. This is a really nice setup. I don't know if you see what I see, but this is quite nice. We have a little bit of a, a Wyckoff accumulation down here. If I was to draw, find Wyckoff for you. So I can show you. I'm gonna copy and paste it. Just gonna plop it right onto the chart. See if we can find out where we are in Wyckoff. Look, it kind of, <laughs> look at these lows and how it's for, it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? A little bit. And now we're pushing up. This is a Wyckoff distribution, this whole structure. Let me do a Wyckoff distribution for you as well. 
So it's good to, it's good to uh, see these patterns on, uh, on charts because uh, the more you see it, the more familiar you're going to become when you see it in the future. Let's see. I'll pull these up. So the one on the right is a Wyckoff accumulation pattern. The one on the left is a Wyckoff uh, distribution pattern, right? And if you look at this pattern, see, without me going into detail, you have one, two, three, and then a lower high four. One, two, three, and then you have your lower high. That's your four, and then this is the last potentially that's the fourth one until we start losing these uh, these lines and when we then we head down so we definitely have some sort of Wyckoff distribution here on the left side I'll delete that and this looks like an extended Wyckoff accumulation right um, let me draw it out for you Basically, this SC was here. Let me bring on the daily time frame, maybe easier to, to map out. I can get rid of this actually now, I don't need it. Hide. And this was the. I mean, it's not exactly like this, but it kind of looks similar <laughs> uh, because the levels are all kind of in and out. Let me make it white. This is your SC. Yeah. ST. Looks like it's here. But then that goes higher, so that doesn't really work unless your SC is up here. But then the SCT should be higher. So unless your SC is up there, your SC is there, and that's your ST. And then, uh, would that be your AR there? The ST should be the form uh, ST and phase B. It's very weird because this SC and this ST in the first part, they don't really line up. This AR looks correct. We don't really get this second push. You see the second push that goes up there? That's the second push. It was a weak push. And realistically, you should have gone up because this more lines up correctly with the ST in, uh, in phase B. It kind of looks more like the correct low. But no, that doesn't work either because that should be the spring. So that's not correct. So actually, that would be correct. If you have an ST there, your AR is there, this is your ST in phase B. Somewhere there. Got 12. That's your S. Because that because because the thesis is that this is your spring here. Look, the lowest one is your spring. We know where the spring is. Then it kind of goes up, zigzags up, comes back down. No, that's the spring. Goes up, zigzags down. 
It's not. This is your spring, but the spring was higher. <laughs> that is your ST in phase B, but it was lower. It's uh, anyway, so what, what I'm looking at right now is a very weird looking accumulation pattern because the spring should have been lower, but it wasn't. And you have a test here. It's slightly higher. That's correct. It's a very weird looking, it's like a bullish Wyckoff accumulation pattern. Because that's your test there. You have a spring, that's your spring. This ST in phase B should not, this spring should have been lower than the ST in phase B. That's what, that's what, that's what needed to happen, but it didn't happen. That should have been your spring there. And you take out the liquidity there. Then you have a test to go up. Uh, this AR looks correct and that means this ST is over here and this this should have this this push should have gone up at the very least to the AR and it didn't so it was a very extremely bearish price action down here it was so bearish that this should have gone up and it didn't and then in the in the in the second part in the phase C part, towards the end of the phase B to the phase C part, yeah, so from this part to this part, it becomes very bullish because the spring doesn't really get to below the ST. Yeah, it should have, it should have gone lower and it didn't. That would have been correct. And then you have your LPS, which is your, lo your lowest point of support. Where is your lowest point of support? Um, here, I mean, it's here, but it doesn't really correspond to anything. That's your lowest point of support. And now we are in the buy up. Yeah, we're above the AR now, see that? We're above the AR. We're at, we're at the buy, this is the last point of support now. So right now we're at the buy up, buy up, last point of support. So we're at the last point of support now. The last thing we're gonna see is an SOS. We, I mean, we're basically in both, we're kind of together. We're with it, we're above the lowest point of, the last point of support but we're also ex gonna experience an SOS, a sign of strength. Uh, um, and that's gonna take us to the PS here. So this is the PS. It's gonna line up with this. That's when we're gonna get some strength. When we come up here, Consolidate underneath resistance. Yeah, look, resistance lines. So we have resistance lines above us. So what I'm expecting is some kind of consolidation underneath resistance here. And then a price move upwards like that. We have a higher spring which is bullish because it was the price made a higher low. We have an extremely bearish phase A and, and first part of phase B because the price was depressed. And so we have a more bullish end of phase B into C. Uh, I like this. I kind of like this idea of this Wyckoff accumulation. There we go. That's your Wyckoff accumulation. Let me just group that up. Wyckoff. The last thing that we want to see is an SOS. We have this uh, resistance levels, which is this key, key SR flip between the high of uh, phase one, uh, sorry, Elliott wave one and the lower of Elliott wave four in the first run. 
that's going to be consolidation underneath resistance when we get there um, how much further is that away from our current price look it's another 64 percent above our current price how would you trade this well this is a good question i'll, I'll go into the trade in a second Let me just group this up. You see these horizontal lines. Which one is that one? It's a key one. It's a key one. Create group. Rename. I get rid of these. I'm going to create a group. go we can bring this into Wyckoff which horizontal line is that one that's a key horizontal line as well all right so we've got rid of all of that uh, I like to look at other things as well just to see if I see anything else so let me do that now um, zoom into these lows Let's see if I can form some kind of channel of these lows Try something else. I mean, you have a good angle. Like we have an, the angle is correct. If you were to take this point here, this first all-time high to the all-time high, the first all-time high to the all-time high. This is a very uh, important angle on this chart. Uh, and so you can definitely use that to, uh, to determine the angle of ascent, you know. If you look at the angles, you see that the price is following that trajectory um, as it follows upward channels right doesn't mean the channels are correct but the angle of ascent looks pretty pretty spot on so if we were to take the two highs the first all-time high to the all-time high and take it down to this kind of the last low I think that's my first kind of extremely higher time frame channel that I would consider and the reason why I would consider that even though it is because it's been hit once and twice in the midpoint quite and it's shown very nice uh, resistance see that once twice so naturally I would expect some kind of resistance when we hit that midpoint. And I, I, I'm looking at the, the all time high now, and I've got these higher time frame levels. So we have to see how and when this hits the all time high. Could it hit the all time high at the beginning of April, the end of March, to coincide with hitting this, this kind of key area here? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, hold on a second, I need to set. 
send my friend David a message. <laughs> You're hearing some beeps in the background. It's because people are messaging me. <laughs> but I hope this uh, this rose is. I think this rose is looking really good. Actually, I'm very. I'm 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 quite I'm I'm quite happy that I looked at it. Uh, let me see what else. So yeah, so maybe we get up to this point, and that would be a good place to take take profit. That's already a, a f almost a four x from where we are, just to get to the all time high of four x. We're above support at the moment. We're we're in a good position for uh, a move up. Uh, hold on, I need to send my friend the message. Oh, there he is. This is looking really good. Looking really good. Um, let me try and have a look at some other things to see if I see anything else. Uh, have a look at GAN. And his nose. Yeah, so we, look, you can see where we are. We're at a 4 1 resistance level, or, a, or an 8 1. This is actually really nice, look. Yeah, this is really good. This is looking really good. From the all-time high to this first significant low, we've come in, we've cleared this first GAN, cleared the second one, and now I've cleared the third one. We're now at the fourth one. We're looking to clear the fourth one to go up. And then I think there's no more GAN lines to clear. Of course, you could kind of pull that up to see where the next one might be, which would be somewhere there. But I think by then you've flipped this level and you're above the golden pocket. So yeah, I think, uh, I think we're in a very good place. Hold on a second. So that's quite, uh, this is looking quite good. So how would you trade this? And this is the question, should you trade this or should you just accumulate? Uh, I'm just, I'll try and see if we can find some kind of, I'll zoom in a little bit to see what the trade plan would be. Um, let me, um, I think that, uh, we have this key SR flip level and we've taken liquidities from the lows here, which is great. So we've basically, this candle that pushed down is an SFP of this low. So I think what you would be looking to do is try to get a back, uh, like a pullback of that level. But that means to come back down there, you're back underneath this SR flip. And I don't think we want to be doing that. We don't really want to come back down. What we really want to do is hold here. Um, so maybe that's not going to work. It's difficult when you have these large wicks because technically that's your invalidation. So whatever you trade now, you'll get that's your invalidation. The price could very easily go down, not take it out and continue. And 
even if it does go down, you could always swing failure that and continue, yeah? What you don't want to happen is a close underneath this level. You don't want it to price to close because that would not look good. That would look wrong. So I think, I think it's not gonna be very easy to trade this unless you're literally looking to accumulate at this range. Um, hold on a second. Sorry about that. So yeah, so uh, you can either accumulate at this level, at this range, or you could, um, yeah, we see, see, the problem is in this range, we're underneath the value area of this range. If we could take a more extended range. Okay, so maybe that's, we're still good, huh? So that's the, the SR flip here. Maybe that's the SR flip here on this lower range. And then maybe that's the entry point. So we are at the value area now, the low of the value area, low. So if you want to accumulate, I would just accumulate now. And I think you're looking at a higher time frame accumulation now yeah we've already had the lower lower range accumulation and we've just entered into this higher range now above this previous high and i think as long as we're continuously holding above this previous high on this sr flip i think you can just start accumulating here for a long hold and you have higher targets the first target will be a uh, higher time target would be obviously you have this sr flip in the way which is uh, from where we are now, it's 74% uh, up. But I think you, on the higher time frame, you could be looking for much higher because if we do get here, as I, as I said before, if we are following this Wyckoff accumulation pattern, then the next area of consolidation is gonna be the SOS underneath this resistance line before we go up and head up to the all time high. I think because of the Elliott wave uh, count that I've done. We've done a, I think we're in the, the, the wave three of the higher time frame. If we're in the wave three of the higher time frame, and this is looking to be the wave one. So actually, if this is the wave one, we have another, <laughs> after this fair wave one completes, we have two more bullish impulses to the upside, yeah? So this could, we could be looking for much higher on this, much higher, especially after we've had this kind of extended period of accumulation at the lows. This is the first time that we've crossed this level and this is, a, this is quite a good place to be. I think a long-term accumulation starting at this level uh, would be a good strategy, just scaling in and just, I think the strat there's two ways you can do it. You can either scale in on a daily basis with small amounts, and then you're not really worried how the price moves because eventually the price is gonna go up. Uh, and so even if the price was to kind of shudder down, because you're scaling in, as the price comes up, you're getting a better average on your price. So you're not too worried about how the price moves. And obviously if the price goes up, you're just scaling in, so you'll, you'll end up with the average as the price moves. And we're not expecting the price to go down significantly. I mean, if we get these spikes, that's fine, but we're not really expecting the price to lose support now because the price has flipped this key level. And it's, it's been above this level now for a good period of 12 days, 12 days. So this is like a reaccumulation range 
above support right now, which is bullish. Uh, so that's one way to do it. I think there's another way of doing it. You could take half a position now. You could say, well, I want to invest. Hmm, how much do you want to invest? Let's say for the sake of argument, you want to invest like, I don't know, $10,000, right? We're at an amazing place for you to invest $10,000, but you don't want to invest a whole lot right now just in case the price goes down, right? So let's say you invest 10, 5,000 here. Yeah, so you buy $5,000 here. Now, if the price goes down, you start getting closes underneath here. Yeah, you could then buy another 5,000 at these lows. Yeah. And the price will come back up to, to back test this level. And then you can exit your full position. Or you can exit your 5,000. And you can exit break even on that one. So you're left with this 5,000 at the low. Does that make sense? The key would be to exit that 5,000 when it comes to back test, just in case the price comes back down again. So you just improve your position like that. Okay. If you exit and the price continues then it doesn't matter because in the first retrace you can re-add that position and you still end up with a position somewhere in the in the middle which is here if you enter say 5000 now and the price goes up to this higher level here and let's say you were to enter another 5,000 as you break and back test, like up here, then you'll end up with an average somewhere in the middle here. But then you're adding on the back test of a flip to go up. Yeah. So you'll end up with an average position higher, but at least you're buying into strength because now the price is going up. And because you're already positioned in, you're just adding to your position on a sign of strength, which is flipping a level to go up. So I think there are different strategies for how you trade this. I don't, I, I personally wouldn't leverage this because I think leverage is on the most part gambling. Most people don't know how to use leverage and uh, they have no idea about position sizing. And I think most people who are leveraging have uh, are gambling, okay? I think you can make, you can, you can reach most of your financial goals just by buying spot and then you don't have the worry about being liquidated. So that's, I think in this case, you can either start scaling in now over the next two, three months, uh, or you can scale in until the price does get up there or comes down and comes back here. But either way, I think if it does go down and you're scaling in or you take a second position down here, it's very important to close half of your position back here just in case it continues going down, yeah? And then if it continues going up on the next sign of strength, which would be a back test of that higher level, then you'd take another position so that this lower position, the on average, comes back into the middle, yeah? So you have to have a strategy for if the price goes down, and if the price goes up, it's very important you have a strategy for how to enter and how to exit if the price goes down and how to pri if the price goes up. Most important thing is to know exactly how much you want to invest into this asset and then how much to invest now and how much to invest if the price goes up and then if the price goes down, how much to invest and where and then where you exit so that you're not caught if the price continues to go down. Because even though we're in a bull market or beginning a bull market, it's really important that you don't have this mental state of mind the prices are always going up and they're never going to go down. Who knows about the price and who knows about the future and who knows about anything, yeah? So it's really important that you have a trade plan which takes into consideration the, the possibility of the price going down and the price going up. And that's why you never 100% position in 
you start with half or less and then you see what happens to the price it is really important that if you do position in say half now that at the key level on the lower range which is here that you do take another position uh, for the same amount because the price will come back up to bounce it will because this is a really important level. It's a key level. It's an SR flip. Uh, the price doesn't just, you see how it, how look, you see how when the price came through here, it, it came back up. See how it came back up? It came back up, yeah. So if, if someone, on when the price was crashing, if someone deployed that kind of strategy, for whatever reason, the price did come back up, it's very important that you close your position size, bring your position size down so that your position is here and this one is closed. Otherwise, you'll, you'll, you can't expect the price when it loses a level to immediately just go through the level. And this is really important. If, if, we, if we start losing this level now, don't ever expect the price to just come back up and continue through that same level. What you're expecting is the price to come back and and you and and for it to resist once you've lost the level of support because it's that's why it's called SR flip. Yeah. So right now we're on top of support. We're not expecting the price to go down. We're expecting this level to hold. So it's a it's a good level to reaccumulate. But of course, if you're wrong and the price does fall for whatever reason, then it's very important that you position yourself in. And I think at the very lowest. I don't ever want to see this lower green line lost as support. This is for me the ultimate low in terms of the channel that I'm looking at. Yeah, I don't want to see if, if this suddenly goes down and down, <laughs> then I'm completely out of this asset 100%, just this done. And you have to, that is your last point of invalidation. I wouldn't, I would not expect that to happen. And if that happened, then there's something very wrong going on. Uh, at the very least, I would expect it to go down there and to kind of bounce and come back up, right? But more likely than not, it will kind of find support on this first area of, of consolidation as it goes that if it does go down and then come back to back test this SR flip if it was to go down. That's that's the most probable behavior if the price starts to break down. Alright? So I think we have a good idea for this kind of trade. And I think if you want an uh, uh, some targets on the higher time frame, then what you can use is this Fibonacci extension take it from the top to the low and then just put a uh, an extension uh, and then I think you have some natural resistance coming in at these these fib lines I, I think the first 1.272 is a natural resistance and then the 1.414 is a natural resistance so it's very possible as if you clear the all-time high the price kind of resists but it because we're above the all-time high because we're above this midpoint of this channel because we're in price discovery because we're probably contemplating a bunch of hype this is going to the moon hype that this 1.618 will be your first key level of resistance and then who knows you know maybe we could potentially push up to the one to two which would be ten dollars from where we are now it's like a 20x and, and maybe even higher you know maybe we'll we'll actually end up getting to the top of this channel which is closer to twenty dollars uh or more yeah so we have you you, you have your higher targets and you just use the fib extension tool to create those targets and i think the other thing that you'll be looking to do is 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 create some kind of elliott wave count 
so we're in the wave one now we have to once you create a wave two it'll be a lot easier to to trade the three the three is usually the most bullish the most impulsive uh, wave uh, and so if we are in a wave two the most bullish scenario would be a, a flat correction um, you could argue that maybe this was a flat correction I don't think this is that the wave one and this is a flat correction I don't know I don't think so I think this is still continuation I think we're still I think it's more likely than not we're kind of in a flat correction now above us a, a key SR flip than somewhere in the middle of nowhere uh, and when I look at the daily time frame it still look it's all impulsive all the way up to here and then who knows this could still kind of continue maybe the maybe the consolidation will be an extended consolidation underneath resistance and it's also possible that we go up there we come down just to back test this to create some kind of uh, like an A B C correction to go up you know it's also possible to do that it doesn't have to be a small consolidated range. We could go up, we could come back down, and then go up and form like an A, an A, B, C to start our wave three. Uh, it's also possible, you know. So there's lots of possibilities here. I'm kind of thinking that this is still quite bullish and it's very likely that we continue going up. So. I think it's not a bad place to get involved with Rose right now. Um, what else is there? 